competitive monotype Pokemon is a format where you can only use Pokemon with the type you pick, just like a gym leader. For example, if you choose to use a water type team, you can use water type Pokemon like Gyarados or Swampert. If you choose to use mono flying, you can only use flying type Pokemon like Gyarados or Moltres Galar. Obviously, competitive monotype Pokemon is influenced by matchup. A mono grass team will always have a tough time versus a mono fire team. But that's the beauty of the format. You try to build your team to have consistent matchups versus all types, and you can get really innovative with finding ways to beat Pokemon that would normally beat your type, and finding ways to maximize your chances with the 6 Pokemon you have. For example, mono flying teams like to use Volt Absorb Thunderous Therian to protect against electric type Pokemon. Mono Poison teams like to use Drapion to shield against Psychic type Pokemon, and Mono Steel teams use Flash Fire Heatran to protect against Fire type Pokemon, just to name a few. You're only limited by your creativity. That being said, however, some types are better than others. Mono Rock will always have a lot of weaknesses, while Mono Water will only have two. Many factors go into deciding whether or not a type is good, like weaknesses, ways to get around those weaknesses, offensive capabilities, and access to good Pokemon. Oftentimes, access to Pokemon can actually be the biggest factor. You can have the theoretically best type of all time, but if not many Pokemon get that type, it doesn't mean anything. Similarly, you can have a theoretically bad type actually be good because it happens to have a lot of good Pokemon with that type. We're going to look at the top 5 types in competitive monotype Pokemon. As a note, different types can be good in different generations. For example, Fighting was one of the top types in Generation 5, but it's terrible now in Generation 8. This video is only going to be looking at Gen 8. But first, make sure you're subscribed. Most of you are not subscribed and it really helps out the channel a lot. If this video gets a lot of new subscribers, I'll make a video about the top 5 worst types in competitive monotype Pokemon, and I'll make another video about the tragic fall of the fighting type. At number 5 we have the Fairy type. Fairy is fundamentally a good defensive type. It's only weak to Poison and Steel which aren't incredibly common offensive coverage moves. Furthermore, it resists common attacking moves like knockoff or fighting type coverage. Offensively, it's just fine too, but what makes it special are the Pokemon it gets. Access to the 4 Tapu Pokemon is great as individually they're already amazing Pokemon. They all have great stats, good move pools, good type diversity, and they can all fill different roles on a team. The type diversity in particular is valuable as it's one of the best ways to keep other types under control. Monotype's not just about managing the weak type matchups, but also being able to get an edge in neutral type matchups. Having different types increases the chances that you may have at least one source of a type advantage versus a random opponent. For example, Tapu Bulu typically has a good matchup versus Mono Water. Having diverse type options is crucial for Monotype. Clefable is another staple and can do literally anything for a team, and for that reason it is also one of the top Pokemon in OU, which is standard play. But the glue that holds everything together is Klefki. Klefki is what makes Fairy Fairy. Not only does Klefki provide a valuable poison immunity, but it's a perfect light screen reflect user for a fairy type team. It gets hazards like spikes and utility like thunder wave and can use light clay to get up dual screens. With dual screens, already threatening Pokemon like Combine Tapu Fini or Tapu Lele, or Swords Dance Tapu Bulu become even more deadly. There's also enough versatility where you can use alternate sweepers like Belly Drum Azumarill, Swords Dance Mimikyu, or even Nasty Plot Togekiss. Fairy's main weakness is Mono Poison, who can try and overwhelm Klefki, and Mono Steel's Melmetal, where you might have to use Babiri Berry strategies to have a chance. But overall, Fairy is a great choice for anyone who likes to play an aggressive game built around light screen and reflect. Number 4 is Dragon. Dragon is an excellent offensive typing with only two types even resisting or being immune to it. Dragon also has key resistances to several types, and when you add in the fact that many legendaries and pseudo legendaries are dragons, you have a recipe for success. Dragalgy is often a necessity as its poison type and access to T-spikes make the fairy matchup playable, but after that it's all about getting as many high-powered dragon attackers in position as you can. For example, Kyurem is one of the best dragons and is a powerful attacker whose freeze-dry matches up well against mono-water, mono-flying, and mono-poison, 
because Mono Poison relies on Toxapex and Amoongus defensively. Many dragons have a lot of versatility too, which means you have a lot of customization. Dragapult, for example, can either be a physical or a special attacker, and Hydreigon can use any set from defensive to choice specs. Garchomp can be a stealth rocker or a sword dance user, and the list goes on and on, which means your opponent can never really figure you out at team preview. Dragon's main weakness is actually not Mono Fairy. Dragalge gives you a shot, and you just have to outplay the Clefki. It's actually opposing Mono Dragon and Mono Ice. Mono Dragon versus Mono Dragon usually comes down to whose Dragapult is faster, and it's part of the reason why Scarf Dragapult is not that uncommon, oddly enough. Mono Ice, however, is the real killer. Slush Rush Ice types, Weavile, Galarian Darmanitan, Ninetales Alola, they all cause major problems with only Kyurem really having a chance. Fortunately, Dragon has fine matchups otherwise and is overall a great offensive team pick, especially if you love to use Draco Meteor. Number 3 is Electric, which might be surprising, because there's an entire type immune to it, and plenty of abilities too, like Volt Absorb. Electric is actually most notable for its biggest weakness, the Ground type. Electric type Pokemon need coverage to beat Ground types, otherwise they're in trouble. In most of singles competitive Pokemon, every team needs to have a ground type because of how good Volt Switch is. But the reason Electric is so popular is because in Mono type, some types like Psychic don't have a good ground type, and versus other types, the risk is worth the reward. Volt Switch and other Electric type moves like Rising Voltage become deadly with Tapu Koko's Electric Terrain. Similar to how a Rain team tries to win a game with Rain Boosted Water type attacks, Electric teams try to break through with Electric Terrain boosted Electric attacks. It doesn't matter how weak Electric types are defensively, if they can outspeed you and knock you out first. If they can break through a team's ground type, or if there's no ground type at all, then they can just spam powerful attacks with fast Electric type Pokemon. Electric type teams are relatively one-dimensional and there aren't many good Electric type Pokemon, but there are enough to make a good team. You can see an Electric type team in Team Preview and know what their strategy is going to be, but it doesn't mean you can stop it. Magnezone can trap Pokemon like Ferrothorn and Excadrill, Zapdos' Choice Specs Hurricane is a monster, and Zerora is a very fast wall breaker. Rotom Wash's Water type with Levitate gives Electric an answer to ground type Pokemon, and Tapu Koko and Surge Surfer Raichu Alola form a potent attacking core, with Raichu being the fastest Pokemon in the metagame. To beat ground type Pokemon, Electric type Pokemon use coverage moves like Tapu Koko's Grass Knot or they use Pokemon's dual typings like Raichu Alola's Psychic or Rotom Wash's Hydro Pump. Besides Mono Ground, teams may only have one or two electric immunities, and it's about breaking that Pokemon down. Versus Dragon, which does have a type advantage, Electric uses Tapu Koko's Fairy typing, and they use Zerora too. Zerora conveniently outspeeds even the fastest Dragon in Dragapult, and can use the moves Outrage or Play Rough to devastate the Dragon type. Electric's biggest weakness is of course Mono Ground. Electric can outplay a ground type team with choice spec Zapdos, but it's definitely not a good matchup. Besides that, in more neutral matchups, if Electric can't keep up the momentum, it can struggle because there isn't much of a defensive backbone. The goal of an Electric type team is to dictate tempo and strike first and strike hard, and its sheer power and speed can lead to electrifying results. Number 2 is Steel, which is well known for being the best defensive type in the game. It's only weak to 3 types, but resists 10 more. Steel type Pokemon are usually well rounded, with the only weakness being the speed stat. Kartana is banned, so the fastest Steel type is Jirachi. Steel isn't the type to blow you out on turn 1 with fast sweepers, but that's okay. It's not flashy, but it's reliable. Steel types usually have good defenses and are already very tough to get super effective damage on and it happens that there are really good Steel-type Pokémon that are outright immune to these weaknesses. Heatran with Flash Fire can cover Fire-type moves, Aegislash can cover Fighting-type moves, and Steel Flying-types can cover Ground-type moves. This triple immunity core forms the backbone of almost all Steel-type teams and is critical to its success. On top of that, Pokémon like the aforementioned Heatran and Aegislash are both good offensively and defensively, and there are other potential threats like Jirachi, Excadrill, or Melmetal. Steel's main weakness is Mono Fire, which has Cinderace with High Jump Kick for Heatran, so you'd have to outplay Cinderace perfectly. Ground-type teams can also use the move Gravity to get past Steel Flying-types. 
Water their Shifu Rapid can cause issues, but other than that, it's usually solid matchups where Steel has to outplay. It's also worth noting that unlike in standard play, Blaziken is banned in Monotype Pokemon for being overpowered, but that's a video for another day. Overall, Mono Steel is not going to blow you out with sheer power, but it's well-rounded and it's difficult to break down while also having enough offense to avoid being a pushover. The natural advantages of the typing are perfectly complemented by the Pokemon available. Finally at number 1 is the Flying type, and it's actually not immediately obvious why it's so good. Flying types are weak to Stealth Rock which is a big limiter, but believe it or not, even before Heavy Duty Boots in Generation 8, Flying was still a good type in Gen 7. Flying types also have key weaknesses to Rock, Electric, and Ice. These are notable because nothing is immune to Rock or Ice. Mono Water, for example, can get past their weaknesses to Electric by gaining an immunity with a Ground type. Mono Flying doesn't have that option. There's no way to gain an immunity or resistance to the Ice type, and at best you can use your dual typing to turn it into a neutral attack like with a steel flying type. What saves flying is nothing too far-fetched, it's just that the Pokemon are good. One factor is that there's actually only one pure flying type, that is Tornadus. Every other flying type comes with a dual typing, which means there's a lot of different options for flying type teams. Also, there are many flying type legendaries to choose from, like the Kanto Bird line and the Galarian forms, and the Gen 5 flying type trio and their forms too. Defensively, there are great options like Intimidate Landorus T, and Steel-type Pokemon like Skarmory and Celesteela who can use their raw bulk to take on threats. Even though they don't have a resistance, Mantine and the Steel-types mentioned earlier can cover Ice-type attacks through sheer bulk. Landorus and Volt Absorb Thunderous can help versus Electric-type Pokemon, and Landorus alone can take on most Rock-type attackers with Intimidate. Offensively, there are plenty of powerful attackers like Dragonite, Thunderous, Galarian Zapdos, Galarian Moltres, and the list goes on and on. The sheer number of really good flying types are what make the flying type elite. Flying has many options and the flexibility lets it handle almost any type matchup. With flying, with the exception of Mono Ice, you can have enough tools to never have an awful matchup, which is hard to say for a so-called matchup-based tier like Monotype. Flying can go as defensively or as offensively as you want, and its consistency makes it one of the best types. These are my top 5, but obviously the list is subjective and there are plenty of good types. Any type can do well if it's put in the right position. For example, the water type is inherently good with only two weaknesses, grass and electric. Furthermore, water can easily cover those weaknesses. Volt Absorb Lantern or Water Ground Pokemon can easily patch up an electric type weakness. If you really want to, you can use Sap Slipper Azumarill or First Impression Galissapod to shield against Grass type teams, although most teams don't actually do that because Grass isn't a major thing to be scared of in the first place. Every decision you make is a trade off, and if there's ever a type you would be okay with being weak to, it would be the Grass type. There are so many good Water type Pokemon, and so many of them have dual typings too which means you typically have a lot of options. You can go for an offensive water approach and use a rain team with Pokemon like Drizzle Pelipper, or you can go for a more defensive approach with Pokemon like Toxapex and Sloking. Offensively, water is great because of rain, and the key becomes about beating other water-type Pokemon and also beating water-absorbed Pokemon. Because water is a good type, people often prepare for it, like with water-absorbed Mantine on flying-type team. In fact, that's why Urshifu Rapid is common on offensive water. It learns Thunder Punch and has a strong close combat. As mentioned earlier, it's very easy to solve the type weakness problem because there's so many dual type Pokemon, but Water also happens to have a lot of the naturally good defensive Pokemon. Toxapex is the main standout, but there are other good defensive Pokemon like Regenerator, Sloking, and Slowbro. Interestingly, Water is one of the few types that can even try to use a stall playstyle. Stacking weaknesses makes stall teams not very effective as a whole in Monotype, because stall teams often use type synergy to wall every Pokemon a team has. But the water typing and raw defenses of certain water type Pokemon make the playstyle usable. In the past, water used to be one of the top types, but it's fallen out of favor lately because it doesn't have the best matchup versus the common types. Electric has a natural advantage, fairies run the Tapu forms which can do well, Dragon has Freeze Dry Curum and Dragalge for Tapu Fini, and Flying has Electric types and Mantine. It's not that Water can't beat these types, 
but it does offer an explanation of why water is still a great type, but it isn't elite anymore. Besides water, there are other types like ground, which uses water-absorbed gastrodon to solve its water type weakness. Then, there's other types like the dark type, who uses reflect, light screen grimmsnarl, and powerful setup sweepers like Moltres Galar. Just because a type isn't in my top 5, doesn't mean it's bad. Many people might have water or ground or dark in their top 5, and that's fine too. Every type is good against something, and it's ultimately what you do with it that matters. That's my top 5, let me know what your favorite type is down in the comments below. And if you're interested in more top 5s, check out my video about the top 5 Pokemon to beat Stall in OU.